Imagine the tranquil waters of Bodom Lake, a popular retreat nestled in the lush Finnish countryside. As the sun sets, casting golden hues over the calm surface, families and friends gather around campfires, sharing stories and laughter. But this idyllic setting hides a dark history. Over six decades ago, this peaceful lakeside became the scene of one of the most chilling mysteries in Finnish history. In the early hours of a summer morning in 1960, a seemingly ordinary camping trip turned tragic when three teenagers were found brutally murdered, their tent torn and blood soaked, a fourth barely clinging to life. The case, riddled with unresolved questions and eerie details, has haunted the nation ever since. What sinister events transformed this picturesque spot into a horrifying crime scene? How did a quiet night under the stars spiral into such terror? Today, we revisit the unsolved mystery of the Bodom Lake murders. Join us as we explore the chilling details and the legacy of fear it left behind. As twilight descended over Bodom Lake, four teenagers, filled with the anticipation of a carefree weekend away from the bustle of city life, arrived at their chosen campsite. They were Nils Gustafsson, Mela Birklund, Seppo Boisman, and Anya Meki, close friends and classmates, each looking forward to a night of camaraderie and the simple joys of nature. Their plan was to set up camp along the peaceful shores of the lake, known for its crystal clear waters and the tranquil pines that whispered stories of old. Bodom Lake, just a short drive from the Finnish capital Helsinki, was a favorite among local campers and nature enthusiasts. Its picturesque landscapes offered a perfect escape, drawing visitors with its promise of serene woodland walks and idyllic fishing spots. Families, friends, and solo adventurers alike were drawn to its calm waters and the myriad of trails crisscrossing through the surrounding forests. On June 4, 1960, our group of teenagers, like many before them, were enticed by these very qualities. They arrived in the late afternoon, the sun still high enough to dapple light through the dense foliage, casting playful shadows on their path. With laughter and light-hearted banter, they set up their camp. They chose a spot near other campers, close enough for a sense of security, but secluded enough to give them privacy. The evening passed pleasantly as they pitched their tent a simple but cozy shelter for the night. They unpacked their gear, sleeping bags, a portable stove, and a radio, the latter to fill their night with music under the stars. As the sun set, they lit a small campfire, the flames flickering against the growing darkness, their faces illuminated by its warm glow. Dinner was a casual affair of grilled sausages and shared stories about school life and future dreams. Later, they would enjoy fishing by the moonlight, the lake's surface shimmering under a sky bursting with stars. It was a typical evening at Bodom Lake, echoing with the laughter of friends and the gentle lapping of water against the shore. However, as night deepened, the mood shifted, the air grew colder, the forest sounds sharper, and the once comforting isolation of their campsite seemed to close in around them. Unknown to them, this night would not end with fond memories, but with a series of tragic events that would shock the nation and leave an indelible mark on the history of Bodom Lake. As dawn broke over the tranquil bottom lake, the early morning serenity was shattered by a discovery that would mark the beginning of a long-standing mystery. A local hiker, drawn to the lake's scenic beauty for a morning walk with his dog, stumbled upon a scene that would haunt him for the rest of his life. Approaching what he initially thought was an abandoned campsite, the hiker noticed the tent first. It was collapsed, unnaturally flattened against the earth, the fabric stained dark with what he soon realized was blood. As he moved closer, a chilling sight met his eyes beneath the crumpled canvas. The lifeless bodies of three teenagers were entangled in a grim tableau of violence. Nearby, the fourth, barely alive, whispered for help through labored breaths. The hiker, his initial shock giving way to urgency, scrambled to his feet and dialed the emergency services. Within minutes, the quiet of the morning was pierced by the sirens of approaching police cars and ambulances. The once peaceful lakeside camp was now a bustling crime scene, cordoned off with police tape as officers and paramedics rushed to aid the surviving victim and secure the area. 
the crime scene was chaotic. The tent, once a shelter of joy and laughter, was now a silent witness to brutality. Inside, the sleeping bags were soaked with blood, personal items scattered and trampled underfoot in what looked like a struggle. Outside, the remnants of the previous night's campfire smoldered, a stark contrast to the cold reality that greeted the first responders. Investigators worked meticulously, documenting every detail amidst the backdrop of a rising sun that cast long shadows over the scene. They collected evidence, took photographs, and made notes, trying to piece together the events of the horrific night. The brutality was evident in the violence inflicted upon the victims, each bearing multiple stab wounds and signs of a fierce struggle. As the news of the tragedy spread, a ripple of horror and disbelief swept through the nearby communities. The peaceful retreat had turned into a site of unspeakable horror, and as the surviving teenager was rushed to the hospital, the grim task of unraveling the mystery began. As the serene morning light washed over Bodom Lake, the scene at the campsite turned grim. The initial shock had passed, and now a comprehensive police investigation was underway. From the outset, the case presented numerous challenges. The brutality of the attack and the lack of witnesses made the murders not only horrifying but also deeply enigmatic. Police Response and Initial Investigation the first officers on the scene secured the perimeter, stringing police tape around the area to preserve what remained of the chaotic scene. Forensic experts began a meticulous examination, collecting every possible clue that could lead to the perpetrator. They photographed the scene from every angle, cataloging the position of the bodies, the tent, and all items found at the site. Detectives interviewed the hiker who discovered the bodies, gathering details about his discovery and any unusual activity he might have noticed. Meanwhile, additional police teams combed the surrounding areas, searching for any items that might have been discarded by the assailant as they fled. Evidence collected. Among the evidence, several key items stood out. The tent itself collapsed in such a way that suggested the attacker might have struck from outside, slashing through the fabric. A set of footprints leading away from the tent, which were carefully preserved and cast in plaster for further analysis. Bloodstains both inside and outside the tent, which were sampled for type and DNA analysis, though technology at the time was limited. Personal items belonging to the victims scattered around the site, including a camera with an undeveloped film that police hoped might contain photos of the attacker. Primary suspects. As the investigation progressed, several suspects emerged, each with potential motives and questionable alibis. The local drifter, a man known to roam the area, often seen by campers and reported to exhibit erratic behavior. His presence near the lake on the night of the murders placed him at the scene, though he claimed to have been merely passing through. His lack of a solid alibi made him an early suspect. The jealous ex, one of the victims, had recently ended a relationship with an individual known for his temper and possessive nature. This ex-boyfriend became a suspect when friends of the deceased mentioned he had been spotted in the area looking agitated on the evening before the attack. However, he maintained that he was at a bar several miles away, a claim partially corroborated by witnesses. The mysterious outsider, described by locals as a reclusive man who often camped alone in the woods near Bodom Lake, he was known to harbor resentment towards groups of younger campers whom he felt disrupted the natural peace of the area. His tent was found abandoned the day after the murders and he was nowhere to be found initially. Days later, he was picked up by police in a nearby town, his clothes muddy and his appearance disheveled. Each suspect was brought in for questioning. Their homes searched for any evidence that might link them to the crime scene. Clothes were examined for bloodstains and their shoes were compared to the plaster casts of the footprints found near the tent. Meanwhile, the police worked to verify their alibis, interviewing anyone who might substantiate or contradict their stories. As the investigation deepened, the community reeled from the shock, and the press swarmed the town, each day bringing intense scrutiny and wild speculation. 
Yet, despite the initial flurry of activity, the trail soon began to grow cold. The evidence collected provided few clear answers, and the motives of the suspects, while plausible, were not supported by conclusive evidence. The mystery of who committed the Bottom Lake murders lingered, compounded by fading leads and the elusive nature of the truth. The tragic night at Bodom Lake left only one survivor, Nils Gustafsson, whose escape from death was both miraculous and mysterious. Found severely injured with disorienting wounds and a fractured state of mind, Nils became a crucial piece in the unsolved puzzle of that fateful night. His injuries were extensive. Deep cuts and bruises covered his body, his clothes were soaked in blood, and the trauma had inflicted severe psychological scars. In the immediate aftermath, Nils was rushed to the hospital where doctors worked tirelessly to stabilize his condition. As he lay recovering, the police were eager to piece together what had happened from the only witness to the violence. However, Nils' memories of the night were fragmented, his recollections clouded by shock and the severe physical impact he had endured. Application of Hypnosis in an effort to unlock the hidden depths of Nils' shattered memory, the investigators turned to an unconventional method, hypnosis. This technique, still somewhat controversial and not fully understood at the time, was seen as a last resort to draw out details that the conscious mind had repressed. Under the guidance of a skilled hypnotist, Nils was gently led through the events of that night in hopes of uncovering any clues that his conscious mind had sealed away. During these sessions, Nils described hazy images and sensations. He spoke of shadowy figures moving around the tent, the sound of whispers in the dark, and a sudden, overwhelming fear. More vividly, he recalled the cold touch of a blade and the pressure of an assault which seemed to come from all directions. However, the most chilling detail emerged when he described a pair of intense, red eyes watching him from the darkness, a detail that both intrigued and baffled investigators. Mysterious Details and Further Investigation These hypnotic sessions produced intriguing yet fragmented pieces of information. The description of red eyes, while evocative, was attributed by some experts to the psychological trauma or possibly a figment of Nils' subconscious rather than a factual recount of the events. Nevertheless, every detail gleaned from these sessions was meticulously analyzed and cross-referenced with known facts of the case. The use of hypnosis sparked debate among law enforcement and the public alike. Some criticized the method as unreliable and leading, potentially planting false memories in a traumatized survivor. Others believed it was a necessary approach given the dead ends that the physical evidence had led to. As the investigation progressed, the snippets of memory recovered from Nils under hypnosis were used to construct a timeline and to identify possible suspects who might have been in the area at the time. However, the fragmented and surreal nature of these memories made them difficult to use as definitive evidence. This left investigators with more questions than answers, the image of those haunting red eyes lingering as a symbol of the unresolved mystery of Bottom Lake. As the investigation into the Bodom Lake murders unfolded, several theories and suspects emerged, each adding layers of complexity to a case that gripped the nation. The police focused on a few individuals who seemed to have either motive, opportunity, or both. The local drifter. First was a local drifter known for his unpredictable behavior and criminal background. Often seen lurking around camping areas, his presence on the night of the murders couldn't be overlooked. However, despite his suspicious activities, no physical evidence directly linked him to the crime scene and he maintained his innocence, claiming he was elsewhere. The Jealous Ex-Boyfriend Another suspect was the jealous ex-boyfriend of one of the victims. Known for his volatile temper, he had reportedly threatened violence after the breakup. While this provided a possible motive, alibis provided by multiple witnesses at a party he attended that night placed him miles away at the time of the murders. The Mysterious Outsider 
Perhaps the most intriguing was the mysterious outsider, a reclusive man who often camped alone in the woods. His disdain for groups of young campers was well known, and his sudden disappearance shortly after the murders raised suspicions. When apprehended, his clothes and belongings were examined, but again, no conclusive evidence was found. Impact on the community and law enforcement the Bottom Lake murders left an indelible mark on the local community. The tranquil retreat had transformed overnight into a site of horrific violence, altering perceptions of safety and trust among residents. The case also stressed local law enforcement, pushing them to their investigative limits and exposing the limitations of forensic technology available at the time. Challenges of the Investigation the forensic limitations significantly hampered the investigation. DNA testing was not yet a tool available to investigators, and the crime scene had been inadvertently contaminated by the first responders and curious onlookers, complicating the collection of reliable evidence. Moreover, the reliance on eyewitness accounts and hypnosis added layers of uncertainty and controversy. In the decades since that fateful night at Bodom Lake, the case remains one of Finland's most haunting unsolved mysteries. Despite extensive investigations, no conclusive evidence has ever been presented to definitively solve the murders. Over the years, the Bodom Lake murders have become a subject of fascination and fear, embedding themselves in the collective memory of the nation. The mystery continues to evoke a mix of intrigue and horror. Stories of the unsolved case ripple through Finnish culture, inspiring books, films, and songs, each attempting to make sense of the senseless violence that occurred one summer night in 1960. As we reflect on this chilling case, we are reminded of the limitations of forensic science at the time and the profound impact the murders had on the community and the families involved. The truth may still be out there, hidden in the depths of the past, waiting to be uncovered. What are your thoughts on this enduring mystery? Who do you think could be behind the Bodom Lake murders? Share your theories in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on more true crime stories from around the world.